Senior Report thanks Edmund Besh of Bristol Burgess Insurance Agency, 65 East Main Street, Westfield, for his generous grant to provide news to seniors. Funding is provided by a grant from New York State Senator Catherine M. Young, representing Western New York's 57th District with a local office in Olean. Funding for Senior Report is provided in part by a grant from Andrew Goodell, Assemblyman for the 150th District of the New York State Assembly. Senior Report with Reed Powers thanks Westfield's Schultz Chevy for a generous grant to inform seniors of important news. Over 50 years of service to Westfield by Chevrolet, Schultz Chevy across from the school. The physicians of Jamestown Primary Care are happy to sponsor the Senior Report. From the Access Channel 5 television studio in Mayville, it's Senior Report with Reed Powers. Senior Report is broadcast live throughout northern Chautauqua County on Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. each week. Call in and share a thought, make a comment, ask a question, or simply wish someone a happy birthday on Chautauqua County's only live call-in senior program. Since 1995, Reed has been bringing viewers hundreds of interesting guests informing the community on a variety of subjects. Here's the host of the show, Reed Powers. Hi. Good morning. Speaking of scalping. <laughs> Good morning. What a beautiful day we have here in Chautauqua County. And I mean it. The sun is beaming down. The foliage is turning. Jack Frost is out there painting the, the, the trees beautiful colors. And take a little ride up in the hills. You'll see what I mean. Great coming over from Westfield to Mayville. You see all the foliage. Oh, what a, what a time of year. And everything is, uh, this is the time of harvest. There are more nuts than there have ever been before. If you look under a walnut tree, you'll see it's just blanketed with walnuts. Look under the apple trees, blanketed with apples. The, the apple trees are bending over double with apples and pears and so forth. It's just incredible harvest. But they tell us that's nature's way of protecting the wildlife because there's going to be a real mean uh, winter. <laughs> we'll have to see. I caught a woolly bear the other day and I checked that little band. And it was pretty, it didn't seem too much bigger than normal. Uh, you know, a woolly bear has two red bands and then a black band in the middle. And you check the black band, the wider it is, the worse the winter. That seems a little wider, but not didn't seem that way. I got two great guests here. We got Chris Madam, we got David Andrews. They are from NetSync, DFT Communications, and uh, they're going to be talking about how to take care uh, and feed your computer because <laughs> so many people have these almost strokes regularly when the computer goes down and uh, I run around the house just ranting and raving and screaming and <laughs> scaring the hell out of the cats and my wife and everybody <laughs> but there's nothing else you can do. <laughs> Eventually it does settle down and it takes care of itself usually or the, although you can always call somebody I guess call that thing have them come over and fix it. 40 bucks, 50 bucks, thank you to start with. <laughs> but uh, computers are uh, they're the, the wonder of our time and the very devil of our time because when they don't function, stand back. All righty. They're going to talk about this. And as always, you can call in any time you want. We have an easy number to remember. It's uh, 753, which is a major, uh, the Mayville Exchange, Jack. Like uh, 5225, which is Jack. Jack your phone in. Okay, guys. Anytime you want to call in. Happy birthday, you can wish somebody a, a happy anniversary, you can give somebody a slap on the back for a great job well done, well done or a boot in the rear for a horrible job. <laughs> this is your time, guys. All right, this is your magic carpet out in the universe, wherever that is. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about computers and things. In the meantime, I was, speaking of 
uh, that sort of thing. I, I watch the uh, television sometimes, <laughs> less and less these days, because that is, I really do get heart palpitations often <laughs> from what I see going on. And uh, the kind of, well, they'll have to get the opinion of NetSync on the, uh, the shutdown. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, it's insane what's going on in Congress right now. Just crazy. Now, you, we all know what it's all about. They tell us it has to do with this and it has to do with that. And the, the president's got to negotiate and they have to have more time for the def, uh, deficits. And they've got to check out. It's all about health insurance, guys. You notice that that's the one hitch that they try to avoid talking about, apparently, because remember, the big corporations own all the television now, and they uh, they spoon feed you what they want you to hear. They the 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 little hitch is that they've got to delay or do away with the Obamacare quote, which is the uh, Health Care Act, which permits people to get insurance that couldn't get it before because they had an illness and keeps the insurance company straight instead of taking 33 percent, creaming that off the top, which the insurance companies are doing. The only insurance program in the whole world where we have to pay the insurance companies to give us back health care and they cream off a third of it almost. Yeah, they don't like Obamacare because Obamacare offers an inexpensive insurance, uh, which is like uh, Medicare and Medicaid insurance that gives you uh, health care. It's about a 5% overhead, not a 33% profit margin for the insurance companies. That's what it's all about, guys. They want to do away with that. For 40 times they tried to do away with it, uh, with the election process. They've tried everything to do it. And the insurance companies, which have, they're going to lose a trillion dollars worth of business. You know that. And think of that. They've got more money. They're one of the most swollen, uh, rich companies in the world is the insurance companies for health care in the United States. Only country in the world that does it this way. And they're putting money into it. Believe me, every time you see somebody come on and say, oh, Obamacare is terrible. It's confused. You can't get into the site. They've already jacked the site, you notice. Uh, they made sure you can't get in. Uh, but uh, at any rate, just stand by. I think Obamacare, so-called the uh, uh, Health Care Act, will probably stay in its finally time somebody did something about it. God help us. They've been trying for decades to get national health care, and we haven't been able to beat Congress because they give it to the insurance companies, which give a lot of money back to them. And uh, I'll tell you something, this will stop. Thank you for listening. <laughs> That's the editorial comment for the day. But it's fact. Double check it. It's fact. This is all about the so-called Health Care Act, <clears throat> Obamacare. All right, now, that's what's basically blanketing the news these days. And it's all baloney anyway, as I say, that has to do with, let's get rid of that Health Care Act because it's going to take so much money from the insurance companies, which should, shouldn't even be there. Okay, enough said. We're going to move right along here. Chautauqua County, we're going to have a 20% tax uh, increase or more, according to Fred Croscott, who no longer is sitting in the legislature, at least temporarily, because uh, his opponent had uh, other people running in this district, and so many people rushed in to vote from his district, and everybody thought Fred would win because he's been, uh, been there a long time and done a good job. And Fred is now currently uh, is taking a vacation, he tells me, and he'll be on the air very shortly, and we'll talk about his future career when he becomes a county executive or whatever it is. He's a tremendous, uh, wonderful, hard worker. Okay, enough. Goodbye, Fred. We'll see you later. Um, we have other things going. Uh, let's see. Now, locally, I guess there's nothing really much happening. I see uh, over in Westfield, they're fixing the Presbyterian Church. You know that when you go up on the top of the hill on Mount Baldy Road, it's got two entrances, one at the bottom, one at the top of the hill. You go up there and you stop, uh, stop right at the top. You can see Westfield down below you. It's so high. And the lake, of course. And the one outstanding thing in Westfield is the Presbyterian Tower. They light it up and it's beautiful. <laughs> working on it right now but it has slate on the top now you have to you know how far you have to go to find somebody who knows how to do slate these days on a steeple <laughs> they had some giant machines there uh, it's fun my my uh, daughter works uh, lives across the street and I was watching this and they were they're having a uh, homecoming day in Westfield and I saw floats coming and going and they had a goat a goat on a leash 
<laughs> it's apparently a, some, it's a sweet little thing. So I couldn't resist going by and say, you know, that's the meanest looking dog I've ever seen. He's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what kind of a dog is that anyway? And some guy told me he's an Afghanistan hound or something. <laughs> Later on, she came by and said, you know, you, you, you realize that's not a dog, it's a goat, don't you? <laughs> I said, well, no, goats have horns. He <laughs> said, it's a mini goat, they don't have horns. <laughs> All right, enough said. Life is fun, especially when you call a goat a dog. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on. I've got some stuff here. We have the best senior groups in the whole world, and, and there are zillions of them in uh, Chautauqua County. Every town, village, church, even apartment houses have senior groups, and they're just wonderful. Uh, the Great Belt Seniors, uh, they, have, they meet over in um, Fredonia, the Mason Hall, and they have a full busload of seniors ran around, and they drove to St. Jacob's, Ontario for a day of shopping and looking at this victorious picturesque village and the foliage ah the foliage that's that's what it's all about they want us to know that they dropped the exercise class on monday october 14th because columba uh did not do actually yeah his name was actually columbo it wasn't columbus believe it or not did you know that yeah mm -hmm. yeah they changed it somehow in the, over the years uh, sign up for potluck luncheon october 16th at 11 30 arts and crafts will be available how about that? Monday, October 21st, uh, they're having a gentle stretch class. It means you don't, don't strain anything. You just work slowly and quietly. Cash, uh, Stockton, uh, let's see, the Stockton, Cash, Dick, and Lily Dale, they all combine. They have a great bunch over there. And uh, they wanted uh, Lily Dale and uh, in Stockton and Cash, Dick, which a terrific bunch of folks. Uh, they had their monthly luncheon meeting at the Legion Post. Thank you, Legion. The Legion gives many, many groups a place to rest, and the VFW, too. Uh, the president of this, uh, June Wallet, and uh, June Wallet uh, uh, gave the blessing along with the pastor, Richard Hamilton. Dorothy and McQuiggan, happy birthday. Lewis and Robert Page over there. Uh, their October meeting, October 14th meeting, it's Columbus Day, will be a pizza party at the Casadega Legion. Bring their own table service. That's the way it is with most senior groups. Uh, Lakeshore Seniors, uh, they meet at the Dunkirk Senior Center, which is over on 4th Street. And what a super place that is, an old school, wonderful place. If you haven't dropped in, dropped in with the Dunkirk Seniors or the uh, Lakeshore Seniors. Lakeshore is a Fredonia group, but they meet there. I wanted to mention, Irene Christopher is serving the coffee and the cake. Irene is a wonder woman. She's been for years involved in senior groups, very strongly involved in breast cancer. And uh, she is quite, uh, she sends out help for people. She does counseling. She, uh, uh, she's just very, very active and uh, does awareness all over the place. This is a big month for uh, awareness, I might add. It's also, I might add, uh, pizza delivery month. It's pizza month. When your pizza guy comes around, give him an extra tip. Tell him, I'm aware of the fact that this is your month, fella. <laughs> Maybe you could take the take four, four, five ones and flip them under hand and have them come up five twenties. You know, that'd be quite a trick, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's a great trick. I see it on TV all the time. Fantastic. Big bingo will be October 16th at the Dunkirk Senior Center. Next meeting over there where the lecture crowd is at the Senior Center is always October the 23rd. Mark that on your calendar and don't miss the Dunkirk Seniors at the uh, Senior Center, which we are also talking about. They, uh, they're sponsoring a trip to the Allegheny Casino Thursday, December 5th, and uh, they're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, that, the, the trip will include uh, bus transportation and, and a gratuity, you know, usually you give a, the bus driver a little something. And uh, they're going to get a reserved ticket for the 11:30 matinee showing on the Shanana Holiday Show. Twenty dollars in slot pay, pay, ten in comp points redeemable for dining. So you're going to get thirty for the twenty they usually charge or twenty-five. Cost thirty-one is thirty-one. Okay, that's a great trip. I'm telling you right now. And uh, they're going to Springfield Center for the Arts too. They're going to see Drawer Boy matinee on October 27th. 
Uh, 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 I haven't got time. They're telling me, you're running out of time, Reed. Shut up. All right. I'm almost finished. <laughs> All right. Center will be closed on October 14th in observance of Columbus Day. Columbo Day. Okay. They're going to give flu shots, incidentally, Saturday, October 12th over there. So don't miss your flu shot. I see you can go to, uh, to uh, one of those drugstores, what, CNN or something? <laughs> something like that. What is it? CVS. 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 Anytime, and you walk in and they give you a shot. They, they have a, the clerk just whips out a needle and pops it in you. <laughs> I don't know who gives you the shot over there. <laughs> the pharmacist. The pharmacist, okay. <laughs> you know, so it reminds me of Mexico. Down there, they're, they're very laid back about their, their drugs. And you can, go, you can go into any pharmacy and you can, grab, you can, you can order whatever drug you want. And there's, you know, I, I like some heroin. They say, well, how much do you want? Uh, do you want it in tablet form or do you want an injection? And uh, if you want an injection, they say, well, you've got to buy a needle, but we'll do it for you. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> they may have changed that since I live, lived in Mexico, but I, I was always fascinated by that. One time I saw a guy actually going through the bar with a needle, <laughs> holding a needle ready to give himself a shot. <laughs> Everybody almost passed out in the bar. <laughs> uh, man, the Americans are surprised by that. Uh, uh, Vice President of Silver Creek, Silver Creek. Uh, let's see, it's Joan Susky, and she opened up with the Pledge of Allegiance of God Bless America, and a whole bunch were present. They tell us, and Ernie, Vin uh, Ernie Hilliker called bingo. You know, after every single senior group, they've got to have bingo. It's de rigueur. If you don't have bingo, you walk out and you never come back. <laughs> We're having a Halloween party on October 29th at noon. You know, uh, Halloween is very serious in many countries. It's uh, the Day of the Dead, uh, Dia de los Muertos, and they... Uh, they spend the night in the cemeteries with their departed ones, and they have candles set up and altars, and they say prayers, and it's wonderful. All right. Next meeting, October 15th, over there in the Silver Creek Senior Seniors, and it says there, there's a note here, new members are always welcome, <laughs> as though they're not in every organization. Enough said, we're finished. We got a guy coming on. <laughs> this guy shoots from the hip, and his name is John. I forget his last name, but he'll be right here. <laughs> PSA. PSA. Public service. At what age is the color that your skin was meant to be no longer beautiful? Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults, and one person dies from melanoma every hour. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. <laughs> okay, there he is. Oh, uh, there I am. Doc Hells. Hey, good morning, everybody. Put my glasses on here. Well, good morning, Reed, good morning to our guests. I uh, hope you're enjoying yourself so Every far. Year. <laughs> Hey, what was that? Okay, good morning, everybody out there. I have a few announcements real quick. Uh, as you know, today we are going to be kicking off a one of two debates here at the show uh, at 12 o'clock. I'll be the moderator, and we're going to have Ed Carutis and Dave Himmeline. They are running for county legislature uh, for, as you were saying, Fred's old post, but it's really not his old post because they redistricted did the whole thing but we'll get into that so stay tuned today is saturday october 12th at noon it's about 1 30 we're going to be having a live debate first time i believe ever next saturday another debate between ron johnson and vince horgan right here same time same place and i'll be moderating that a couple other quick announcements. Uh, next Saturday, October 19th, Chris, if you want to hit that poster for me, uh, the Westfield Mayville uh, Rotary Club, their Gold Rush, October 19th. Uh, the tickets are $30, chicken and rib dinner, all the beer and soft drinks you can partake of. It's going to be at Easton Hall this year, uh, starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, the big prize giveaway is $1,000, all right? And the odds are really good because we only sell 350 tickets, so 1 in 350. Also, starting tonight, read. oh, no, it started last night, the Town of Terror at the Safety Village. Our good friends over there are having a big doings over there, and the tickets are $10. And... Um, 
It's every weekend starting this weekend and the next two weekends. So go on out there and help them out, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Reed, uh, I'm still trying to figure out where you were going to get your shot at CNN there. We were all kind of scratching our heads there for a minute. Okay, moving right along. I got to tell you, Reed, I'm absolutely jealous. I'm absolutely jealous today. I opened up the paper, and right on the front page, congratulations to Sherman Central School, ranks number one in business first ratings. Now, you can say what you want about it. I used to complain about when I was superintendent because I never made number one. But they just have paid great, great homage to these guys. Uh, one out of the, they're number one out of 429 upstate schools, and uh, they were higher than all the, the academic guys up in Buffalo and in the suburbs. They were performing better than the affluent suburbs in the area. So congratulations. Sherman uh, has consistently been award-winning. Uh, school for the last 10 years or so and uh, I just want to my hats off to you guys well done because it's not easy to to get to that point it, you know at least being recognized by business well, they, uh, is they're they, tough if you read further in the article they mention uh, they always watch senior report absolutely and yeah. speaking of senior report I have a letter here mm -hmm. that I wanted to read to, to you read and to the rest of the crew it's dated September 30th 2013 it's from the FCC Washington DC did you, mm -hmm. did you get a copy on this? No, I didn't. All right. well, I, 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 I'm <coughs> sure that they uh, disapprove of us because well, they raise a rumpus about the government. Well, I'll read on. It says, uh, <laughs> to the board of directors, volunteer staff, and cable access uh, 5 TV, uh, due to the impending government shutdown, please be advised that our monitoring offices, they're the ones that kind of keep track of us, right? Yeah. Will be closed un for, until further notice. Now, I did go on the internet, and it is true. It, it's closed. It's absolutely closed. Nonetheless, please be advised that all rules of protocol should still be adhered to read. Therefore, please continue to follow the approved guidelines as follows. Limit loose language. But they can't tell you not to use it. It just is limited. Just limited. Limited. And uh, you limit, you're dropping your pants and giving them your butt, too. Well, You've got to limit that. Uh, one reference per show regarding cat food. <laughs> <laughs> Two, right here, right yeah. here. This, oh, there's your. This is what seniors will be all eating. All right, there's your one reference. <clears> when, <throat> when the, when the uh, go go government finally gives you your Social Security <laughs> cola, Maybe you'll be able to eat something besides cat food. All right, there, there's your one reference in. I, I got it in early, I guess. Two yeah. references to firing the mums in Congress. <laughs> you can only talk about that twice per show. Mm -hmm. One reference only to the lack of increase in senior citizen cola. Okay. <laughs> I and think we, we already touched on that at least once. There, we? there you go. Uh, so, and then it continues. Uh, a special note of interest in regarding your desire each spring to focus on leaks. <laughs> We here at the FCC take leaks very seriously, <laughs> as does the rest of Washington, I guess, and recommends that you cease any further discussions on leaks. <laughs> the letter continues, although our offices may be closed for an extended period of time, as we all know, uh, one of our field uh, agents will review all of your tapes of your shows within the next six years, and you will be held accountable nonetheless. <laughs> Thank you for your desire. Well, let, me, let me drop my pants <laughs> No, right no, now. no, not yet. No, let oh, me get okay. off the air first i don't want to be con right. i don't want to be a considered part of this it says thank you for your desire to bring social issues to your uh senior re uh, viewers each week remember we will be watching uh <laughs> sign the acting chair m Clyburn. so there you have it Reed. all right government's thanks. closed but they will catch up with all of us they'll be so watching anyway huh follow they'll the guidelines and we'll be all right folks we'll see you at 12 o'clock back to you Reed. okay thanks a lot john hamill stock hamill's telling it like it is and don't forget to, well, that 12 o'clock, is that going to be on the air live? Right here. Right here, live, 12 o'clock, Channel 5 in Mayville, and probably all over the county. The great debate coming on. And uh, is Lori Cornell going to be on one of those debates? No. Nope. Oh, she's running for the county clerk, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. the producer. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Two guys here, that you, you didn't believe you'd ever get on, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, I'll tell you a secret. We just put your name up so that people will watch the show. <laughs> you, right, you, 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 don't get to, right. you don't say anything. <laughs> it reminds me of <laughs> the first time I went on the county board, in, in uh, county board uh, down in Suffolk County, and I started to say something. They said, sir, you're new on this board? I said, yes, I am. Well, you do not say one word. Shut your mouth for one year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I still sneak in a word once in a while. Uh, these guys are hardworking members of the team over at NetSync, which is a subdivision of DFT Communications. That's over in Fredonia, right? They That's have correct. Right around the park there, right across the park almost. Yep. Nope. Yeah. 
And uh, they're here to tell you what to do when your computer goes bonkers on you and how to prevent it. Uh, some of the tricks in operating computers, keeping them healthy. Uh, uh, for instance, you don't unplug them right away. <laughs> but you have to sometimes to reboot the darn thing. But at any rate, they're here to talk a little bit about us. And uh, please introduce yourself. This guy here next to me. You are? I'm Chris Matum. I'm from uh, DFT Communications, as uh -huh. Reed said. Um, I'm Were you our, born here? In what, in yes, I was. I was born here. Um, Where? In Dunkirk. Dunkirk. And I've lived in Fredonia pretty much my whole life. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. So you're a local boy. I am. Well, did, you, did you go to school anywhere around here? Um, I went to school, uh, Fredonia High School, and then uh -huh. uh, Allegheny College down in, uh, oh, in that's Meadville, a good school. Meadville, Pennsylvania. That's a good college, yep. Allegheny. <laughs> what did they teach you down there, if anything? I'm an economics major. Okay. Yep. And you wound up uh, being a, uh, a techie over at NetSync, right? Yeah, I, I've been a tech my whole life, so <laughs> that's just how it worked out, I guess. Yeah, but. well, this is National Pizza Month, remember. You can always deliver pizza and they give you extra tips. <laughs> I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> and we have next to him, we have David. Uh, David Andrews. Uh -huh. And are you local, too? Uh, I'm actually from, uh, I'm originally from Randolph. Oh, stranger. So, <laughs> yep, I'm, I'm a stranger to this area, so my wife actually uh, brought me out to this area. How did she, um, uh, how did she bring you over here? Where did she come from? Uh, she, well, she's from Westfield. Westfield, New so, York? Yep. <laughs> Westfield, New York. Uh, yeah, there's a Westfield in every state. Did you know that? Uh, I did not know yeah. that. Mm -hmm. There is. Okay, so uh, she brought you up here, and what do you do now? You work at NetSync, and you're a, a techie over there? Um, I am the coordinator for our computer repair division. Uh -huh. um, I've been there for about seven years. So kind of work with all the computers hands on. We, you know, doing all the computer repairs there. So um, you're well, busy. Very busy. Very busy. Extremely <laughs> busy nowadays. So yeah, well, there, there's always problems with computers, and we're yeah. always there to fix them for everybody. So well, my uh, daughter has a simple answer to uh, computer problems. She just buys a new one. She's got a stack, <laughs> stack of computers yeah. up in her uh, upstairs room. <laughs> yeah, so she said, look, it's only $400. It saves me a lot of hassle and aggravation, and it worked beautiful for a whole year. <laughs> well, sometimes, depending on the fix, that is the best way, way to go, especially sometimes. if the computer is old. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell me now, uh, what's the biggest problem with computers? What do, you, what, what, what do people bring them in for? I would say viruses. Viruses? Um, yeah, people still, you know, get, even, even with the newer operating systems out there, there's still a lot of, of viruses that lurk out there on, on, you know, all kinds of different websites. Now, viruses are meanie things, right? What, uh, rotten little kids put them on your computer, they tell me. It's a lot of young kids yeah. who, can, uh, who know yep. how to do this, and they set them up, and they, they screw your computer. What, what, what do they do to the computer? Well, what they do a lot of the times is um, there's different types of viruses. There's things known as Trojans. There's things known as malware. Mm -hmm. um, malware specifically, is, I would say, is the most uh, troublesome because it gets on the computer and it really is there just to annoy the user. Um, it pops up ads in your face, you know, things like that. Um, sometimes it'll pop up like a fake window that looks like, um, it looks like your antivirus program. But it'll say, hey, to, to clean this off, you have to pay, you know, give us your, your credit card and pay us 50 bucks. And you know we promise to remove this this virus when actually it's the virus telling you that. Yeah. So that's something that's something to look for. It's yeah. something that's newer in the virus world. But you know some people don't understand that and don't kind of know what their real antivirus program looks like. Mm -hmm. So then they'll they'll be clicking on that or entering in their credit card information, which we always suggest against. You know don't don't put your credit card in there unless you definitely know the website or that it's a piece of legitimate software. You mean they may just so, wipe you out, huh? <laughs> yeah, they can. Yeah. Um, yeah. We know, yeah. we know um, just working in our repair, you know, we've had uh -huh. horror stories of people bringing it in and saying, well, I put my credit card in, I thought this was going to wipe this virus off, and, and now I've got 10 charges on my credit card. <laughs> so, <coughs> you know, you always want to be careful of that type of stuff. Because okay. that's what they're out there to try you to get. To, you want to say something, Dave? Um, well, there's, uh, along the lines of the uh, fake antivirus softwares, there's actually some new ones going out. It's called the FBI virus, as we like to call them. FBI, and like the yeah. Federal Bureau of yeah. Investigation? Yep, F FBI, and it'll actually uh, yep. pop up on your screen. It'll say FBI in there, and it'll give you a warning that your computer's been disabled, and it goes back to the uh, money payment scheme. And well. they actually have a spot on this page that's on your computer, and it asks for a payment. And if you, once you p make the payment, it'll unlock the screen. You use your computer again. Uh, so uh, th those are one of the thing, another common thing that people get that uh, they end up paying money, and if unfortunately, you, it does not fix your computer. So. Can you just reboot and make it go away? Uh, you cannot reboot and make it go away. It'll it will stay there. there. Uh, it's, so. a, it's permanent. Mm -hmm. 
then you got to send it down to you guys or somebody. Oh, um, yep. Fifty bucks. <laughs> yeah, if if it if it's bad enough um, to the point where you know you're you're heavily infected, then usually it is you have to go to a computer repair shop to get that removed. And mm -hmm. and really, there there's some great ways and great little tiny things and tips and tricks that you can use to kind of avoid that. Um, kind of like I was saying, you know, avoid anything that looks fraudulent or something that you're not you know familiar with. Um, you know, definitely run antivirus always on your computer. Now, tell, let me, let's use the antivirus program that uh, stops this uh, crap, whatever it is. Tell me, um, I see a lot of them free. Are they any good? AGV? Yeah. And, there's uh, there's, there's several free ones that are really yep. good. What would, um, you, what would you recommend? Uh, we actually, we recommend Microsoft Security Essentials. Which uh, one? Microsoft Security Essentials. Okay. It's actually, it's by Microsoft. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's very good. Uh, we actually we used to recommend AVG, and then we kind of we moved away from it. Some well, of the software tri we use. Well, it tricks you into paying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're, they're pretty tricky. AVG, I used to have it, and I switched over to yeah. some other operation. Yeah, they do have a premium version. They try to right. try to they, pitch that. They'll on try you, so. to trap you into that no matter what. <laughs> you say, "I want the free one." You sell. Thank you for picking the premium. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of features too in the in the paid for that I would say the the normal basic computer user. You know, that's just browsing the internet. Yeah, does not really need. I mean, they, they throw a lot of stuff in there in the in the paid for version too. That you know, it's it's extra. It's kind of over the top. And believe it or not, if you if you have an antivirus program that has all that extra junk included, it can a lot of times actually slow your computer down. Oh really? So so not only are you trying to avoid viruses that slow your computer down, you're using a, an antivirus program that's also slowing your computer down. So you know, you want to kind of. Look for things that kind of um, that, that run the best. Don't include all the extra junk that you don't necessarily need, um, but but have a really good scanner. And like Dave said, the, the Microsoft product, which actually was released only a few years back, um, is actually a really good good product to have on your computer. And it's free if you have Windows, um, any version. I think XP and higher. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, XP and higher. Windows 8, the new operating system, it it actually in includes their um, their version. Um, it's called Windows Defender. They renamed it, I guess. But what do you think um, of Windows 8? I, uh, I was told uh, to, to try to find Windows 7. Windows 8 is a real complicated, messed up system. Um, what do you think? Is that true? It, it, well, it's different. Everybody is used to their start menu. We've yeah. had the start menu for years. Mm -hmm. um, and with Windows 8, they kind of changed the layout. And the reason why they changed the layout is they were trying to unify all of their devices, cell phones, tablets. Uh, they wanted their desktop computers, laptops, they want everything to have the same interface. So they moved to this interface and everybody's seeing it and they're confused by it because it's completely different from what they're used to. But the one thing people have to remember is it's not just what you see, there's a lot of security features on the back end. Mm -hmm. it's, it's supposed to be the most secure operating system. So there, there's good and bad with it. Um, pros so and cons. Mm -hmm. if you can get used to the interface with it, it's a lot faster than previous versions, and the security is definitely the number one thing. So, so when does that you you buy that? Do you like it? Um, I actually have it running on two. I have two laptops and a desktop computer, mm -hmm. um, and my desktop still runs Windows Seven. Um, my two laptops they run Windows Eight, and um, I upgraded. I'll tell you the truth. I could not stand the new interface. Um, at first, it was kind of like a big hurdle for me to get over. Okay, when I number one, there's no start button yet. They're supposed to put that into an update. But when you hit your Windows key or you go down to the lower corner where the start button would normally be, then this whole interface pops up that lets you kind of pick tiles in your apps because they're going like the app route. Mm -hmm. um, now that I've used it for about uh, I don't know three four months, I'm I'm more familiar with it. I know where things are and it's easier. Um, but if you're a desktop user, I would stay, say if you, if you can, go with Windows 7. If you want to go for the new feel and you're up for kind of a little bit of a challenge, at least at first, um, especially if you have a touch screen, that's where Windows 8 kind of shines. Um, some of the newer laptops and tablets out there, they have a touch interface. And it's very nice to be able to actually use that, that app window that kind of covers your whole page. Um, in, you know, with touch. So, mm -hmm. so that's a neat feature, but uh, you know, I would say if, if you're used to a desktop and you still have a desktop with a standard screen, Windows 7 is probably the way to, to stay for, for now. Um, yeah, okay, now you mentioned laptops, both of you. Um, it seems to be the coming thing. A lot of people get them, and I see they run cheap. There are mm -hmm. some that are, quote, remanufactured. Now, what do you think of that? Are they any good? It can be. You got to be careful when you buy something remanufactured, uh -huh, used. Uh -huh. Obviously, just like anything, like if you're buying a used car, you got to make sure that you know it's a it's a good car. Um, you know, I I think that 
everybody wants to go mobile. I still have a desktop even at home, and I really like it. Number one, I play video games on it, so that's that's one part of it. Um, and number two, I'm just used to the to the desktop interface. I like my keyboard and I like my mouse. You know, um, some people they they want to be very mobile, especially students. Um, you know, if you travel a lot, is a desktop for you? Probably not, because you don't want to be lugging around all that stuff. You want to have something very small. So. Um, and that's where the tablets really are coming into play more and more now is because they are so ultra portable. Well, what's a you know? tablet? A tablet is um, basically it's like the screen of a laptop but a little smaller mm -hmm. um, and it's all touch screen. And sometimes you can clip, clip a keyboard into it or sync one with it wirelessly. Uh -huh. um, but you know, that, that's kind of the new up and coming trend is the, is the tablets. Yeah. So, you know, and they're, they're really nice for web browsing and checking your email if that's all you're doing. If you're doing some other things, then, you know, you might want to look at a, a laptop with a full keyboard and everything, or a desktop still if you're going to, you know, mostly use it at home. But um, Desktops are cumbersome. You're not going to drag them around. Nope. nope. <laughs> not one bit. <laughs> okay, we're sitting here chatting with uh, Chris Madam and David Andrews, and they're giving us a little background on computers and stuff, and uh, we're opening the phones now, so anybody would like to call in? Uh, the number is... Uh, Five seven five three five two two five Jack seven five three Jack. So every caller who calls in receives a Big Mac. You have to pick it up while it's hot. <laughs> uh, we're uh, chatting about uh, computers, and I'm sure some people have some real rotten computer problems they may may want to talk about. <laughs> All right, now tell me, when you buy a when you buy a laptop, what are you looking for? You could tell me, David. Oh, when you buy a laptop, what are you looking for? Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing when you're buying a laptop is, um, well, you got to make sure that it's not too heavy. Uh, the laptops have different weights, and uh, you can usually identify the weight if you're ordering online. Uh, they usually give you in the description how much it weighs. Um, if you're buying in a store, you can usually identify on the package. Uh -huh. uh, th that's a big thing is weight, because a lot of people set it on their lap. Um, that's where the, the name laptop came from. Um, one of the other things is, of course, wh what operating systems on there. Um, you have Windows 7 and Windows 8. So I if you're not going to like Windows 8, if it's not a touchscreen laptop, then uh, maybe that's not the route to go. So, um, and, and of course, you got to look at the specs on it for the price you're paying. Uh, I recommend at least three gigs of memory. Three uh, gigabytes of yep. memory. Uh, four is, is definitely preferred. Uh, you want to have at least a dual core processor, um, and if you're going to go Windows 8, I would prefer getting a touchscreen. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they do, they do cost a little bit I more, agree. but it's it's definitely it, it's a feature of the operating system. It's one of their selling points. So what if you don't you? get a touchscreen, you're kind of taken I taken agree. away yeah. from the laptop a little bit. What so. do they charge for these? Um, a laptop can really be anywhere from maybe like. Three ninety nine to I mean you could spend up to you know twenty five hundred if if, if yeah, you bought a really e high end like, gaming grade laptop easily. with the highest specs but you know there's kind of a sweet spot in there um, I would say around like six to seven hundred is where you can get yourself a really nice la full featured laptop in today's market um, you know you can go the cheaper route that's fine um, but what do you lose um, you lose speed. But mostly it's speed and, and, the, and the processing power. Um, you know, the laptop might look the same as its higher, higher end model. You know, mm -hmm. the, the case and everything might be the same and the screen might look similar and you might get the same size screen and all that stuff. But, you know, you're, you're really losing your, the computing power, the brains of the, of the, of the computer when you're kind of going for the, for the less model. We got a couple of phone calls. You want to take one? Yeah, for sure. sure. Who Absolutely. wants to take it? Well, yeah, you're sitting next to me. You take it. Then you can chime sure. in, David. You're on, caller. Good morning, Reed. Good morning. I got all kinds of grandkids that come up to the house, and these kids seem to know a whole lot more than I do on computers. Um, what should I be worried about when they're on my computer? Porn. Or got porn. <laughs> that is one thing. <laughs> what do I do about it? You know, watch it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just just watch where they're going. Um, there are websites, even some like kids love gaming websites. It seems to me um, a lot of the computers that we get in to our repair center that you know have viruses, and the parent brings the computer and says, "Yeah, my my younger son or daughter 
or my grandchild was on this and it, you know, it has a virus now and it's popping up in my face. A lot of times they're like, they tell us, you know, well, they were on a, a gaming website and we weren't really paying attention or whatever and, and that's okay. But, you know, a lot of times the games themselves are okay, but there's banner ads that can be accidentally clicked or enabled, um, you know, or pop-ups that somebody clicks. You know, a kid might not understand what the pop-up says or whatever and they click it and now you've got yourself into trouble because you, you've got that malware or a virus on your computer. Um, so, you know, that, those are the dangers I would say mostly. Um, something that I would say, when kids are on a computer in today's day and age, it's really scary. The internet is a scary place for a kid because it's very easy to go to websites that you would not want a child to go to. Um, it's as easy as typing in a Google search. Now, Google and the big search engines, they try to filter that, you know, that bad stuff, pornographic, um, you know, whatever out. But, you know, there, there's, it's very easy to, to get around that. And um, that, that's something I would be careful of, is just, just monitoring where they're going, really, if you can. Yeah, um, you, you can put uh, limits on your computer, too, can you, as to you what, can. What, what they can dig out? <clears throat> there are things that are included in some of the newer operating systems. I think they started it with Windows Vista and mm -hmm. now 7 and 8, um, parental controls. And you can actually, um, it's, it's built into Windows, and if you have a, a Microsoft account, you can actually kind of control and see what, what web pages they've gone to. And there's a bunch of paid applications you can actually download, um, you know, that, and I don't know one off the top of my head right now, but there's a bunch out there that you can pay that kind of limit where the kids can go. And, and I think they're, they're really quite handy um, to keep them safe, but um, that's, that's what I think. Yeah, well, David, you probably concur. Uh, uh, yeah, you, yeah. You, as a parent, you have a right to and a probably an obligation to control your children's use of the computer. Yeah. To a part, anyway. Yeah, I agree with that. And try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, what about other things like con the conventional wisdom used to be you don't give out your social security number, you don't give out your credit card number when you're buying things. What, what do we do? I, I'm confused by all this. The best thing to do is to. Um, you know, only use websites that you know are legitimate. Um, a great example is like Amazon.com. If you're, if you're going to online shop, make sure it's with a reputable place online, you know, a big name place, or, you know, if you go to, I don't know, uh, Walmart.com, or, you know, something like that, a, a big retailer. Try to stay away from, like, the smaller places because sometimes those don't include security on their website. Um, mm -hmm. the, big, the big guys have things which, it's called an SSL, and on, on the website, if you notice, up in your um, address bar, you'll see something, your address bar will change color or give a little lock oh, um, yeah. in the browser. Those, that's, the, that's when you know that it's safe to enter in your information. If, if you go to pay for something online or it's asking you for information, you know, personal information, social security, um, you know, which really only is banks that I think ask for that, but, um, or financial type websites. But uh, if you're going to a website and it has that SSL, then you basically know that everything is encrypted between your browser and that web page that's going across. What is this across. thing now? What do you look for? It's called an SSL. It's a secure socket layer um, certificate on the web page. Uh -huh. So when you go, and a great example again is Amazon. When you go and you check out at Amazon, mm -hmm. you're going to notice that your browser bar, um, a normal browser bar will say like HTTP colon slash slash and then the name, mm -hmm. Amazon.com. Um, it'll say HTTPS to tell you that it's a secure, that security is on that and it's actually encrypting all the data that you're sending across uh, the internet and the reason that's important is because if that's not encrypted and you go and send passwords or your, your information you know your personal information a hacker could technically be in the middle somewhere on the internet and grab that that those packets coming across but when it's encrypted it's almost impossible for them to to get that information and decipher it you know they might be able to grab the packets but for them to decipher the code is is nearly well, impossible well, they're very sneaky I uh, recently, are. I recently uh, checked into eBay for something or the other, and I sent a question to the uh, seller, and I got back a message shortly after. Thank you for buying such and such. Oh, well, wait a minute! I didn't <laughs> buy it, so I quickly sent him back a notice. That's how they trapped me. These were bad people, yeah. and they got all my information. And uh, fortunately, uh, eBay is very, very clever at picking this. Uh, these mm -hmm. uh, these guys up, oh, absolutely. and they called me immediately and said, you know, you've been hacked, somebody's got your stuff, you better change it, <laughs> and yeah. of course I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you got to watch out every second. There's always somebody after you in, in the computer world. Yeah, e eBay is a great site, but you just have to be really careful if you're going to go on there and shop. I mean, you have to make sure that the seller is reputable. Yeah. You, know, you have to make sure that they have feedback, because how that works um, is 
eBay will allow buyers to, to throw up feedback for someone. And um, you know, if, if you are buying from somebody or looking at a product that they're selling, you want to make sure they have, you know, I would say at least 10, maybe 20, even 100 you know, positive feedbacks. And you can click the feedback and make sure it's all positive, you know, that they don't have a ton of negatives. Um, I use eBay all the time. I buy and sell. Um, sometimes it's the only way to get older computer parts, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and we've even used it once in a while in our repair to, to buy older computer, computer parts um, that are no longer in production you know, or is, is a used part. Um, you know, but we always check that the seller is reputable. And even sometimes if the seller has a bunch of positives, <laughs> you, know, you can get burned, but there is um, eBay protection if you're using PayPal services that they will protect you up to a certain amount of money. So you know, I, I recommend that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and it's not even, eBay is, is a different ballpark from, there's a lot of third-party websites out there uh, that you well, can buy a product a, from. What's a third-party website? Um, well, ones that aren't kind of mainstream. Uh, you got uh, Amazon and, of course, eBay. A lot of your big-name websites that you buy stuff from, there's going to be a lot of websites that aren't well-known. Mm -hmm. uh, there's mm -hmm. um, quite a few of them out there. And sometimes when you look at the prices, they might seem too good to be true. Uh, they could be a scam website. Uh, they don't actually sell a product. They just get your money. It looks like a legitimate business. Uh, so what I recommend is going to a website called resellerratings.com. Uh, a lot of people post ratings on there. You can get uh, a pretty good feel for if it's a safe website or not. So I highly recommend doing that if you're going to move away from Amazon and Walmart.com and Target and all, all the big names that we know. So, um, so any of those ones, if they're not big names, it would be kind of a third-party uh, website. So. And to check them out, in a nutshell, what, what do you do? Um, when you go to the website, it's mm -hmm. just there's going to be a search box. Mm -hmm. And you just type in the website that you're uh, looking to buy from. And you type it in there, and it's going to give you some results. And it's going to show you. It's going to give them a, a rating. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to have comments from customers that have purchased from them. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to list if they had positive feedback, negative feedback. And a lot of times, some of these, uh, some of these businesses will actually respond to people on there and say, OK, well, you had this problem. This is what we're going to do to make it right. And you can see as soon as you pull somebody up mm -hmm. on there, and, and you can tell that they're bad. Don't, don't buy from them. You're going to lose your money. So. Yeah, well, some of them are very good. I've many a time bought, an, uh, bought a uh, product that it was defective. And in all cases, They've returned my money, or the product. Mm -hmm. In many cases, they keep the damn thing. <laughs> I think I have to send it back. You know, right? They don't want it. <laughs> if you're buying, if you're buying online, one thing you would just want to make sure is that if the price seems too good to be true, it probably is. You know, uh -huh. and, that, and I've actually been burned myself a couple times, and I've learned the hard way that if it, if you, if it looks too good. Stay away from it. You know, buy from a more reputable site, not just some, you know, site that looks like somebody threw it up in, in one night. Yeah, so. one of, one of the tricks that really annoys me is that I use I use a computer, is that they will say free, and such and such. So you go to the light, it's free for a month, <laughs> a free trial. Mm -hmm. It's not free by any means, you mm -hmm. know, which is very annoying. Mm -hmm. We're talking to a couple of pros here. Uh, they uh, work for NetSync over at DFT Communications in Fredonia. And uh, Chris Madem and David Andrews, Chris is sitting next to me, they're telling us a little bit about uh, computers and inside information, whatever you want to know. And uh, if you want to ask them a question about your ailing computer, they will tell you how to fix it over the phone. <laughs> we can. Good luck. <laughs> we can try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now another question about the, uh, the computer world. Um, there are so many different varieties. Which ones would you like? What do you like? Uh, just your preference. It's nothing that's, you know, you're not telling anybody you're for or again anything, but what do you like in the way of computers? I would say, um, and this is not a sales pitch of any no, means, of course um, we sell all different types of models. Yeah. Um, Manufacturer-wise, I still like Dells because of their warranty. They really stand behind their warranty. If there's a problem, if you're in that warranty period, and you can extend it too, which is nice, and it's very easy to do right through their website. Um, you know, we do extensions, all kinds of things like that. But um, the warranty, in my opinion, is, is really good. You know, um, we've had issues before, you know, two years down the road, the, the motherboard dies in the computer, which is like the guts of the computer, and they send a technician out, and they will replace it if it's in that warranty period. So um, that's one of the biggest positives of going with a Dell. Other manufacturers have stepped their game up. I have an Acer laptop. Um, a few years back, Acers were like the bottom of the barrel. 
and I think they've really stepped their game up. They they produce some really nice machines for kind of the the cheaper um, the cheaper option. So um, those are those are two of my favorites. Um, Asus is another one. Yep, a Asus. Um, they well, they well, make well, very nice. How do you spell Asus? What's this? What's it's A S U S. A S U S. And okay. They used to be in the gaming, computer gaming, and higher end comp desktop market. They made uh -huh. they made parts, and then they started getting into um, throwing together whole computers you can buy, desktops and laptops, and I think they even have tablets now too. Yeah, they um, they definitely have tablets. And they a lot of the time come with like an accidental warranty. What's a lot that? of the, um, meaning if you dropped it. Or you spilled something in it. You sat on it. Yep. <laughs> it, they, their warranty actually covers that for the first year, uh, so two, that's two kind of a neat. Yeah, you can dump coffee on there. Yeah. They'll, they'll definitely cover everything, and no and uh, yeah. that's that's another great thing is warranties. They're yeah, a very critical part of when you're buying a computer. <laughs> you got to always make sure you're getting a good warranty. Uh, Dell they offer mm -hmm. on-site. They'll come out and fix it. A lot of the other ones you have to mail it in. So mm -hmm. you always want to make sure that you, what warranty you're getting, how long it is, and, and what, the, uh, what the rules are to that warranty to make sure that you're, you're not going to be stuck a year and a half from now with, with a broken computer that you paid a lot of money for. Yeah, especially so. if you have a desktop, man, the, the mailing of that thing is more than the cost of repairing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I would say that um, you know, fixing a desktop is so much easier, especially I mean, you know, when we see desktops come in in our computer repair um, business, you know, Getting parts for those is so much easier than laptops because a lot of times when so one thing goes wrong on a laptop motherboard, the whole laptop, you know, has to be replaced or uh -huh. a new one has to be purchased. So, you know, that is the thing. Having a good warranty on specifically a laptop is is the way to go. Okay, really we is. got a couple of calls still. Sure. Uh, I've got one anyway. Uh, good morning, caller. Thank you for waiting. Good morning. Well, since this is about seniors, I want to mention that I have recently seen advertised several times on television, although I didn't write the number down or anything, where they have developed computers that are much more senior friendly for people that aren't really familiar with, with computers and what they can do and, and how to simply get from one place to another and things like that. Because the new computer, I have a fairly new computer and I've had computers almost since they came out when they were, when they were like uh, 426s or whatever that number was way back when. I've had computers and I'm having a hard time running this computer because it's so much different than my last one which is was almost five years old so it definitely was ready to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Okay, I believe that. I had a, a 1,000 byte or something like that, by megabyte maybe, or a computer back when. It mm -hmm. just had 1,000 but it was a computer and worked yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now, well, and now we're into the terabytes. <laughs> so the first computer I had, there was no internet, and then the next one, there was like three million places you could go to. Period. Now there's a trillion. Yep. <laughs> well, <laughs> seniors uh, use them a lot just to get, keep in touch with their grandchildren. Believe it or not. Well, I use it a lot. If, if somebody says something and I'm not quite sure about it, I go fact check it and stuff like. I really do use it a lot. I love my computer. Mm -hmm. In fact, I wonder which I would give up first, my TV or my computer. And I'm pretty sure it'd be my TV. <laughs> no, I, I say I could watch TV on my computer. Actually, I say the same thing to my grandchildren. <laughs> 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 oh, you mean your computer or your grandchildren? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my grandchildren. I explain to them, they go. <laughs> well, anyway, okay. that was my comment that well, they are. You, uh, they do have uh, a computer friendly. I, if you went, if you have somebody in your family who has a computer, they could do a search on it for you. I'm sure. Yeah. And they're especially just, just look on their stupid computers. <laughs> For the stupid people. <laughs> Thank you, caller. Great okay. call. Uh, have a great day and uh, happy Columba Day. <laughs> Columba Day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, that's uh, that's an important thing is the uh, ability to use it on thing. You know, it, uh, yep. most yep. people say, "Oh, I couldn't touch it. I can't use a computer," and they don't realize how simple really it is to use a computer. It's not that hard to use it. Yeah, yeah. and, and there's there's really been like a, f a push in the last, I would say, maybe like three to four years to simplify some of the basics, you know, web browsing. You, everybody wants to do web browsing. So, you know, they, they've made that very easy in some of the previous operating systems. And even Windows 8, that's kind of Microsoft's whole idea of Windows 8 is just to make it very simple. Throw the apps right on the screen, you know, click internet for, for your browser and make it that easy to search. What's um, an app? You keep saying app. An app is uh, just an application on the computer. Uh -huh. And um, before you had programs, they were really called, and you had to install them. Kind of, it was a little clunky on how to do that. Now, now apps are kind of like an easier 
Um, if you've ever seen like a like a iPad um, or something like that, your app is like just an easy touch. You know, one click and you're yeah, you're one, firing one up that program. One click installation. Yep. Uh -huh. Speaking um, of I, uh, the, the I machine, and now that's also by uh, the the company you like, right? Who's that? The I machine. Like IMAX yeah. or Macintosh? Yeah, Macintoshes are are really nice computers. Yeah. Um, they are. I'll say that they're they're simplified computers, which right. is really nice for a new user sometimes to to go that route. There's a, there's something to think about. Caller, mm -hmm. you're on. Good morning. This is Linda calling. Linda well, good Spaulding. morning, Linda Spalding. Uh, I'm so glad you're talking about computers yeah, because yeah. the Senior Employment Program and mm -hmm. the Chautauqua County Office for the Aging yeah. has the Generations Online Computer Training, basic computer training, one-on-one -on -one with a peer coach. And they That's pretty uh, good. work at their own pace. Uh -huh. There's training going on right now at the Patterson Library in Westfield. Mm -hmm. Also in Dunkirk at the Dunkirk Free Library, uh -huh. in Jamestown at the Jamestown Chautauqua County Office for the Aging. Well, it's a I want wonderful that. training. We've trained well over 800 people. To use a computer. To use a computer. Basic That's computer great. training. If somebody wanted some, uh, give them a number they could call, Linda, would you? Well, they should call our office in Mayville, and then okay. we can refer them to the appropriate peer coach. And by the way, the peer coach is uh, one, one of their uh, contemporaries. They're uh, another senior aide. The number is 753-4471. Okay, great. Well, thank you for the tip, Linda. And I hope you get out and uh, do a little ice fishing soon. Oh, well, not for a while. I'm oh, enjoying really? this beautiful autumn weather. Ah, uh, isn't it wonderful? Linda, yeah. thanks for the call from Chautauqua, the Chautauqua Institute of New York, okay? Thank you. Have a great weekend. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, she's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a given. You can use a computer. Anybody can. And mm -hmm. uh, so if your grandchildren say, look, Grandma, you've got to learn to use a computer, smile and say, I'll be happy to try. And then uh, you'll find you're <laughs> using it before you turn around, right? Yep. yep. Absolutely. You know, some of the nicest things, too, is when you have um, grandchildren or mm -hmm a son or a daughter, um, and you're older, it's a really nice way to stay in touch. I mean, really neat apps like Skype, um, where you can do video chat over the internet if you have an, a high-speed internet connection that'll support mm -hmm. it. Um, that is really neat. I actually just taught my grandmother how to use one on her tablet, a Kindle mm -hmm. Fire. Mm -hmm. And I've talked with her, you know, right over the internet, even when she's been on trips, because she really likes taking trips. So, uh -huh. you know, that type of thing, I think, is really neat. Get out of here. They're saying they're sending us off. They're saying get lost. I'll give you 30 seconds to wind up. Go ahead. All right. Um, you know, one of the things that we always um, get questions on are, you know, how easy is it to use a, a computer? And, and you know, I've never really used one before, especially some of the older population. You know, I'm a little intimidated. Don't be intimidated. Just, just, you know, jump right into it. Um, you know, Go there's, for there's it. guys like us that can help. Um, you know local guys that are, that are there to, to show you how to use it, at least do the basics. And if you break it, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You know, okay. we'll help Dave, you fix. Dave, want to say so. a final word? Say goodbye, Mom, or whatever. <laughs> uh, bye, Mom. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I agree with Chris. You know, don't, don't be afraid of a computer. Uh, just go ahead and give it a shot. There's all kinds of things you can do to get help. You can get local help. You can search on the internet. All the information you need is on the internet. So okay. sometimes even us, we, we might have to look, look something up on the internet. Thank so you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Chris Madam. No problem. David Andrews Thank you. All right. from NetSync. Uh, that's over in DFT uh, Communications in Fredonia. Thanks for giving us a great show, good information. Give me a phone call if somebody wants to follow up. Give me a number. Um, our main number at DFT is 716-673-3000. Uh, there you it's go, It's the friends. best way to call us. So. That's the way to get in. Uh, you can look them up in the phone book, too. I want to thank the special people out there who make this program possible. Sorry, last caller, we didn't get you next time. You come back sometime soon? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. We'll, we'll do it again. <laughs> Chuck Kelsey, Devin Taylor, Chris Burt, Randy Burt, Chris Ramaker, Jeff Zook, Don Zenz, John Hamels. Last but not least, tune in at noon today. Uh, this is Saturday, uh, the 12th of uh, October, and watch the show when they're going to do an interview on a couple of our legislators. And we'll find out what's really going on in Chautauqua County. May all that is proud and true and noble abide with you. I'm Reed Powers. <laughs>